Hey everyone, this is Scott at FastView and I'm going to show you how to use WebSpy Vantage to import and analyze your log files from Palo Alto firewalls. So once you've obtained log data from Palo Alto, either via syslog or by exporting to CSV, the next step is to import them into WebSpy Vantage. So simply go to the Storages tab and click Import Logs. I'm going to call my WebSpy storage Palo Alto Firewall. And click Next. I'm going to select Local and Network Files and Folders. And I'm going to make sure I've got the Palo Alto Networks loader selected. Now WebSpy Vantage supports over 200 log file formats from other network devices. So if you're not using Palo Alto Firewalls, there's almost certainly another option there for you. The next step is to add to the folder where your log files are stored. So I'm going to click Add Folder and my log files are stored in C Drive, Logs, Palo Alto Firewall. I'm going to click OK and you'll see that I've got all of my log data that I've exported to CSV. I'm going to ignore the last three pages of the import dialog and just hit OK at this stage to get that import underway. WebSpy Vantage's multi-processing technology can import multiple log files simultaneously to increase your import speed. The more CPUs or cores in your machine, the faster your imports will be. Also make sure you're aware of where your storages are being created by going to Tools, Options, Paths and checking the storage location. Okay, that import's now finished and you can see it's imported 419,000 records from my Palo Alto log files. Now that I've imported my Palo Alto log file data into a WebSpy Vantage storage, I can use this storage for reporting and analysis from this point on. So you can even delete the original log file data and still be able to report on it. To start with, let's go to the Summaries tab and run a new ad hoc analysis. I'm going to ensure I select my Palo Alto firewall storage and I'm going to also select Ad Hoc Analysis and click OK. The Ad Hoc Analysis shows you all of the fields that you can report on from your Palo Alto log data, such as actions, so you can report on blocked traffic versus alerted traffic, applications, categories, your Palo Alto rules, websites visited, and of course, users. WebSpy Vantage can also link a authenticated username up with their object in Active Directory or any directory server. So you can look at real usernames, group them into offices, departments, or even the entire company. To create these groups, simply go to the Organization tab and use the Import Organization wizard to import details from your directory. As you can see, my organization is grouped first by the organization name, then into cities, and then by departments. And underneath that, I have my users. Just make sure that you're using a correct username as per your log file data. So if Palo Alto is prefixing a domain, make sure that's covered in your username attributes. When you import your organization, WebSpy Vantage automatically populates some aliases in the background. For example, my username's alias, you can see is populated. So that if any of these values appear in my log file data, my reports can show the real username. WebSpy Vantage has also created an alias for both of those groups that were created. So I have a departments alias, and I've got all of the users that are located in my corporate department, for example. And I also have an offices alias. So I've got all of my users located in the London office. You can then utilize these aliases in your reports and analyses, and also when filtering reports as well. So let's do that. Let's go to the Reports tab and take a look at the report templates. WebSpy Vantage comes with a range of default web reports, but they're quite generic so that they work across any log file vendor that logs URLs, date times, and usernames. Unfortunately, they don't utilize some of the cool stuff that Palo Alto logs, so I've created a couple of Palo Alto specific report templates. To do that, simply create new template and make sure you select the Palo Alto threat schema or the Palo Alto traffic schema. So this productivity report is based on the Palo Alto Threat Schema so that I can analyze the URLs that people are accessing. You can see that it's first giving me a productivity assessment and the key column here is based on the category field and applying an alias called productivity that groups my categories into productive, unproductive, acceptable and unacceptable. Just to show you real quick how that works, go to the aliases tab and take a look at the productivity alias. So we can see all of my unproductive web categories group nicely into unproductive. 
and you can modify this alias to suit your organization's needs. Let's go back to reports and edit my productivity report. You can then see it's going to give me a list of categories, sites visited, applications, and so on. And then it's going to give me a list of users. And for each user, I'm going to see the sites, applications, and productivity for each one as well. So let's generate this report on my Palo Alto firewall log file storage. I'm going to generate a web document. I'm going to just call it productivity report. I'm not going to worry about creating a separate report document for each department or user at this stage. I'm just going to create a single report. I can also apply filters if I want to, but I'm going to leave this unfiltered and I'm not going to send the report via email to anyone at this stage either. Let's hit OK to generate the report. OK, and here's my productivity report for Palo Alto Firewall. If I click the first section, we'll see our productivity breakdown. 79% of my organization is browsing acceptably and 14% productive, so that's great. But there is a small percentage of traffic that is unproductive and unacceptable. So let's find out more. Let's open up the productivity assessment on the left hand side and let's open up unproductive. Here I can see all the unproductive websites or categories being accessed. So we've got social networking making up 55% of traffic, shopping taking up 29% and so on. I can go down to the sites visited section to see what types of websites are being accessed and you can see amazon.com is definitely the largest website being browsed. Google Plus and Facebook and Twitter is also taking up a lot of unproductive browsing. And the hourly activity chart shows when throughout the day most of this activity is taking place. So most of it is occurring between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So yeah, on lunch breaks and after work. So that's also quite acceptable. Now we've also got a breakdown of each user that has been browsing unacceptably. So let's take a look at Michelle. Here we can see that Michelle's mainly on Twitter and Facebook and Google. And we can see the same sort of information just for Michelle's browsing, such as the applications being used, the categories, the dates that she's online, when throughout the day she's browsing these unacceptable sites, but also the full activity log. So here you can see that between 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. she went to Facebook, started browsing Facebook at 11.05 a.m. and browsed it for half an hour. The next day between 12 and 1 she was on Twitter.com browsing that for half an hour as well. So you can see all of the browsing sessions for unproductive usage. And we've got the same information for any of our top users. And of course, if you want to make any changes to this report, such as adding new columns, filtering out specific categories, or even adding new nodes into the report navigation on the left, all of those things can be done easily by editing your report template. So now that we've imported data and we have a report template that gives us the information we need, let's automate the process of importing new log data and sending regular reports to department managers. Everything in WebSpy Vantage can be automated using the Tasks tab. Simply click New Task. And for this purpose, I want to run a task every day. So I'm going to call it Daily Task. And on the next page, I'm going to set a daily schedule to run at 1 a.m. every day. I'm going to enter my authentication details so the task knows who to run as when I'm not logged in and click OK to add the task. Now that I've got a daily task, at the moment it's not going to do anything other than launch the Vantage Exe. So I want to add some actions to this task. Specifically, I want to add a import new hits to an existing storage task action. I'm going to select my Palo Alto firewall storage that we created earlier. I'm going to select resume import from the last position. That means it's going to simply pick up where it left off and import any new log data that's been written to the folder that I'm monitoring. So now at 1am every day, WebSpy Vantage is going to import new log file data into my storage. Now that storage is just going to grow and grow and grow until you run out of disk space. So it's a great idea to also add a data retention policy using the purge data from storage task action. Again, I'm going to select my Palo Alto firewall storage and I'm going to say purge data older than three months. And you can set that to whatever you like based on how much disk space you have available. So now at 1am I'm importing my latest log file data into my storage and keeping that storage nice and trim to the last three months. Now I'm going to add a publish report to web module task action. The web module is a separate web application which is basically an intranet site that you can publish reports to. You can then allow department managers to log into that site and view reports that they have permission to view. So to do that I'm going to select my Palo Alto firewall storage. I'm going to select the productivity report Palo Alto that I created earlier. 
I'm going to select the web module that I've installed on the same machine here. So you can see it's localhost slash web module. Now I want to create a report for each department manager. So instead of a single report, I'm going to select report on each group and I'm going to choose my department's group. Again, I can create a separate report for each office or for my entire company if I like. But I'm going to create a report for each department. And in the permission section, I want to only allow managers of the department to access the report. So I'm going to check the box to allow only managers of each group access to their group's report. If you also want to allow specific people access to the report, such as the CEO, you can select them here. Now I'm running this report every single day, so I don't want to report on my entire three months of log data every single day. So I'm going to add a relative date filter and I'm going to select the past one day. As this is running at 1 a.m., I don't really want to include the data between 12 and 1 a.m., so I'm not going to check the include current period checkbox. You can also notify the people that have permission to access the reports via email that a new report has been published and it will include the URL link so that they can go and view the report. All right, so now I've got a task that's going to run every day at 1 a.m. to import new log file data, keep it trimmed to three months, and also run a report on yesterday and publish that across to the web module for each department with permissions for those department managers. Okay, so now I've configured my task actions. Let's test it out by clicking the run task button on the left. You can see the status of the task by looking down the bottom at the status bar. So it's now been through the import actions and the purge actions, and it's now generating my reports. Okay, so now those reports are finished. So let's go to the web module and let's log in as the manager of our accounts department. Go to the reports tab, see all of the reports that have been published for me, the manager of accounts. And here's the new report that's arrived for the entire accounts department. Let's check it out. Here's a productivity assessment. So I can see some of my staff are browsing unproductively. So let's go and find out who that is and what categories they're, they're browsing, what sites they're browsing, and dig into each of those users as well. So the sites that a specific user visited as well as their full activity log. You can also log out of the web module and log back in as the administrator. And as administrator, you can see all reports that have been published for each of my departments. So generating daily reports is fine, but what if you're a massive company and you need to generate reports across an entire month or even years? Holding that amount of data in a WebSpy storage could take some disk space, and generating those reports will take quite a bit of time and a lot of computer resources. The Dynamic Reports tab in the web module solves this problem by allowing you to collate your daily reports into one overview. For example, I'm logged in as administrator and have access to all the department reports that have been published over multiple days. The Dynamic Reports tab lets me collate these into a single report and also filter by the department I want to view. Generating reports on top of reports is much faster than generating reports on raw log or storage data, allowing me to report across multiple months or years. This is a great feature for enterprises with a large amount of data. I hope this video has been a useful introduction into how to use WebSpy Vantage for reporting on Palo Alto log files. If you have any questions or need help getting started, please make the most of our free support services, which you can find at support.webspy.com. We look forward to helping you with all your log file reporting requirements.